just telling him exactly what he did. And what's more, he's argued and he's off. The referee must consult his linesman. He's going to ask Mr Flood exactly what happened. Ronnie Moore's name went in the book two minutes ago and he's off. Well, Gary Micklewhite's off, it's the end of his afternoon, and this game just goes on from bizarre incident to bizarre incident. Today's headlines, which welcome you to an edition of the big game that should keep you talking all day. It all happened at Rotherham, and yesterday's beefy encounter with Queen's Park Rangers provides compulsive viewing. Well, certainly the bars around Rotherham were buzzing after yesterday's match at Millmore, which will live long in the memory. Well, having been involved in football for over 20 years as a player, I can honestly say I saw it all yesterday. And I'll be talking to the two managers responsible for their teams and asking why it happened. To a degree, their tongues are tied, but I'll say it for them. The three officials, with their weak, inconsistent decisions, were just as responsible for what happened as anyone. And this was a classic case of a game getting sadly and needlessly out of control. Well, as if that game isn't enough, we've also seven goals to offer from Southampton against Stoke and the Merseyside derby. What a menu. A new competition today too, but let's have the starter. And Rotherham United against Queen's Park Rangers amply illustrated how quickly things can change in this wonderful game of football. It's exactly eight weeks ago that we were here at Millwall to see a Watford victory that left Rotherham in the bottom four. So it's a tribute to everybody connected with the club, but today Rotherham start their game against Queen's Park Rangers fourth from an incredible 31 points out of 36 represents the fairest story of the season and it's one of the ironies of football that this Rotherham side cost roughly £400,000 to assemble and that's chicken feed at the side of today's opponents. Rangers, who stand seventh, are collectively worth more than £2 million. Just one change from the side which inflicted such embarrassment on Chelsea last week, but Romney Fern is unfit, so Mick Gooding comes in at substitute. The romantic side of Rotherham's success is reflected by Billy McEwen. The Scot thought his career was over when he suffered a dreadful back injury over 18 months ago. But he fought his way through the pain barrier, persuaded Emlyn Hughes to give him another chance, and his return has coincided with the team's remarkable upsurge, and today he plays his 250th league game. Queen's Park Rangers have the best playing staff in the second division, according to Emlyn Hughes, and they added to it on Thursday when Steve Wicks returned to the club from Crystal Palace for £275,000. Wicks was the last signing to beat the transfer deadline, and as he stayed only a matter of months at Palace, it worked out at £1,000 a day. He was part of the million-pound deal involving Clive Allen, and after a barren spell, Allen has come back into form with 10 goals in 12 matches. He's the man they're looking to for a cup final appearance this season, a week today, Rangers play West Brom at Highbury. A nice opportunity to give a pat on the back to the Rotherham Education Authority. These children from Anston Brook Junior School have spent the past few days at Millmore, the whole party numbered over 40, and every week this season a local school has taken part in the scheme which has proved so popular it's now booked up to the end of 1983. The children have training sessions with the players, they see all aspects of the club from commercialism to policing of matches, which can only be good bearing in mind they're the fans of the future. And with the Junior Pass Holders Club at Rotherham now boasting 1,700 members and the Millers United Junior supporters going from strength to strength, Rotherham are really looking to the future in an admirable way. Manchester's Alan Banks is today's referee at Millmore. Conditions absolutely perfect for what promises to be a cracking second division game. Terry Fenwick is the Queen's Park Rangers captain and almost found Clive Allen in the first 10 or 15 seconds of the game. Right? Quickly, that's what Jerry Gow's in the side for. A uh, long ball out there to Mike Flanagan. Was playing in the left back position. What a good run down the left by Ian Dawes. His first touch in league football, Dawes. 
and uh, it almost was productive. And that's Ian Dawes, 19 years of age, his league debut today with Tony Curry out through injury. A big day for him. McEwen got up there, just a little nudge on to Seisman, and the first free kick of the game, and it's Steve Wicks conceding it. So an inauspicious start for the new signing. Hamlin Hughes taking that one quickly to Seisman. Lofted too high for Jerry Gow. Oh, is there an offside? There isn't. And it must surely be a great start for Rotherham. And John Seisman has done it. Well, this is incredible. We've had one minute and ten seconds of play. And it's Rotherham 1, Queen's Park Rangers 0. A dream start again for Rotherham. Well, Rotherham have got this habit of scoring goals in the first minutes of a game. They've done it three times here on the big game this season. And it starts from an Emlyn Hughes free kick, very quickly taken. Seisman is the man there, and he's going to get it back rather fortuitously. It's a dreadful back pass here. No, in fact, it's put through by Jerry Gow. Seisman's onto it, rounding the keeper, Hooker, who's way off his line. And although Hazel tries to keep it out, he can't, and it's 1-0 to Rotherham. Seisman, it's his first goal here at Millmore since the opening day of the season, and he really has come back into the side with a bang in place of Rodney Fern. Well, Rangers are a very enterprising side, and when they come forward, it's like them playing at home. They're always looking for goals, nothing defensive about their makeup, and they've won a free kick on the far side. There's he indoors. Built in the mould of Kenny Sansom, according to Alan Harris, the uh, Rangers coach. If he's as good, well, Rangers will have got a bargain. And McEwen bundled off it. And that's surely never going to get out as far as Mitterwhite. He brings it cracking down into the bargain. And he's apologised, but he's going to be the first name in the book. And Mr Banks has really got to take the heat out of this encounter. He's picked, he's picked the man with the longest name, but as you see, it's a fully deserved booking because as breaking goes for it, that is way over the ball from Gary Micklewhite, and the booking is totally justified. Now, Towner, he's not really seen much of the ball yet. He might now. Good ball from Ronnie Moore, offside though. <laughs> you could say they're all up in arms. A look of anguish on Tony Towner's face because he could see a clear path to go ahead of him. Good skill by Stainrod, dangerous, here's Micklewhite, and a cracking effort from Gary Micklewhite, the best from Rangers so far, and he'll be a disappointed man. What a good, skillful move it is, and Gary Micklewhite thundering that one in left-footed, beats Mountford, beats the post. And here's Fenwick, danger for Rotherham, as Fenwick tries the shot, and that's going to be a corner. So an opportunity for the Rangers fans behind that goal to cheer for a moment. Flanagan it is, with the corner and the message. Fires it in for Hazel, it almost got through the wall, appeal for handball, Hazel off the line, surely now by Forrest. He seemed mesmerised for a moment at the back. The corner from Mike Flanagan was pinpointed and Hazel got the first header in, it came off Jerry Gow, there's the lunch from Wicks, just look at the bodies around there, and eventually Jerry Forrest, coolness itself, clears. Kicked by Mountford, as it happened, it uh, felt kindly for him. Still Rangers coming forward, it's Flanagan's ball, Green, and problems here until Mountford makes another catch. He's until the cricket season's coming up. He's got the ball so many times. Now Towner. Moore. Popping up on the right flank for a change. Nice little back flick for Towner. Still wants to take them on. Can he get it across? He certainly can. Seasman's back header. Too high and wide. But a nice move. Seasman stays down. And the 
don't think it's just that he's disappointed. Uh, the little back flick from Ronnie Moore was what let Towner in first of all. He still wanted to take on his opponents, gets in the cross, and it's Seisman who goes up, uh, gets the header, gets under it really high and wide. So Rotherham's goal scorer, fit to carry on, even if not feeling 100%. Just getting there first. Now he's got a knock in the face. Well, oh. it's like a boxing match at the moment. And the referee is being surrounded by players. I don't know what the Queen's Park Rangers players are complaining about. It's Emlyn Hughes who's flat on his face. And Barry Claxton certainly being kept busy. Here he arrives again. Emlyn Hughes holding his head. Well, it's going to be a booking for Terry Fenwick. Alan Banks just telling him exactly what he did. And what's more, he's argued and he's off. Well, that's extraordinary. Terry Fenwick is off. It was an area of challenge with Emlyn Hughes. Hughes went down. Fenwick argued, and I think probably he's got as much for arguing as for the challenge. from Peter Hooker's goal kick. We've just seen John Seisman down with a head injury. Now, they watch for Emlyn Hughes. Fenwick's the man who goes up with him. And you can't really see there. Emlyn Hughes goes down, holding his head straight away. One can only assume that Fenwick's caught him on the way down. Well, Emlyn Hughes appears very, very groggy. I think he's asking what happened. He doesn't appear to know much about it. Somebody better tell him that Queen's Park Rangers are down to ten men. talking about it uh, even if he doesn't remember much of it Stankliff away what a good header that was to Seisman now Towner oh, he was, it was a perfectly placed pass from Seisman now Towner looking for the cross to McEwen oh that would have been the most extraordinary goal of the season if it had gone in from Micklewhite McEwen still Rotherham rampaging forward with Brecken to Moore can he get it in Seisman Well, no goal came from it, but it could have done on a couple of occasions. And it was the perfect little ball from Seisman. Towner's cross, and as the ball comes across, it's the back pass there from Gary Micklewhite. Well, his heart must have been in his mouth. What an own goal that would have been. Good challenge by John Green. Rangers have certainly found progress much more difficult since Terry Fenwick was sent off. And Rotherham really ought to make their extra numbers count in the second half. Now it's Jerry Forrest still coming forward, continuing his run in the area. Oh, and what a goal that would have been. Well, I thought that was a corner at least, uh, but the referee says not. What a good run by Forrest. It's the second time he's advanced that far up the field. And good skill from the Rotherham fullback, who's got all the confidence in the world to take on the Rangers' defence. He fires in the shot, and we'll see if it was a corner. Well, it looked to me as though Hooker deflected the ball wide. A goal kick is given. Gow couldn't quite get there ahead of Stainrod. There's only Allen up if he can find him, and he couldn't because Green cut it out. And there goes the whistle for half-time, Mr Banks points to the dressing rooms and off go the players who have given us a very entertaining first half and John Seisman's goal in only the second minute separates the sides, a good goal by Seisman, he's smiling about it and well he might because Rotherham perhaps on course for another victory, half-time here it's Rotherham United 1, Queen's Park Rangers 0. on the clock as we make a false start to the second half. The news, by the way, from the dressing room is that Terry Fenwick was sent off for violent conduct. That's the message from the referee. This time we do get away to a satisfactory start. Rotherham playing, of course, from left to right now. 
And Queen's Park Rangers having to reorganise somewhat with only ten men. Good skill immediately by Forrest. He's brought into the action again. won't get as far as that one but green it is this time he comes forward timed interception absolutely perfect but it's still there for him if he can get back to his feet well a very scrappy opening to the second half That's a better ball from Breckin to Moore. Is McEwen on or off? He's on. Surely he'll make it two. Billy McEwen, Towner. Oh! Well, McEwen must wonder how on earth he failed to score his first goal here at Millmore for nearly two years there. It's John Breckin's ball. I think the Rangers thought that there was going to be an offside flag as Moore pushed the ball onto him. The referee says not. McEwen shot and the crucial touch from Hooker just takes the ball wide. Threaded its way through to Stainrod somehow. Flanagan, good ball to Micklewhite. Cut out by Hughes, it could still fall for Clive Allen. Oh, and that was a splendid effort from the Queen's Park Rangers centre forward. Uh, Clive Allen receiving the ball from Micklewhite here. He doesn't think twice, he just cracks it in and only for fractionally wide of the post. Oh, Stancliffe. <laughs> well, that's an enormous boot. And it almost got Towner away down the flank. In fact, it might still. He's still there. And he's inside the box, cutting it back. Seisman. Is it a second for Seisman? The header from Ronnie Moore. Side net. There was Ronnie Moore smiling about it. He'd have had a bigger grin if it had gone in. Well, Towner, persistent there. Gets inside the box, gets the cross back. Now, Seisman just has to carry the ball forward, nudges it across. I thought Seisman's effort might have gone in at one stage and Moore couldn't quite get the angle. <laughs> Stancliffe hoiks it high again. Moore's header on for McEwen. Plenty of men in the box. Here's Emlyn Hughes. Looking to get it through for Seisman. Still plenty of men forward, but it's away by Flanagan, who's done the work of two men. Well, Flanagan has got Stainrod wide on his left and uses him. Good looking cross away by Hughes. Composure itself. Towner. These are crucial moments, Wonsfield. The Rangers, Rotherham are just turning it on. Towner looking for support and finding it in Gow. Oh, that would have been a good ball, but it's fell the referee. Alan Bax is down there and he's hurt. And Jerry Forrest is continuing the play, but the referee's obviously badly winded. Well, it's not often you see this in a game. Jerry Gow's cross striking the referee on the side of the head, actually, there. And he's down. And his senior linesman, Mr Flood, is there, along with Barry Claxton, who's taking the... Who's applying the treatment? <laughs> a shake of the head, a smile from Alan Banks. And yes, we'll carry on, thank you. He's, he always looks as though he enjoyed it. And now he's going to tell Evelyn Hughes off for taking it too quickly. So the referee's just checking his vision's all right, I would think. The bounce up it's got to be. Actually, he's got a good header from the rough. The drop ball between Jerry Gow and Gary Waddock. There's been so much to talk about in this game, even if the quality of the football hasn't always been great, there's been no shortage of incident. Oh, almost won by Stancliffe, but Allen had stayed with it. Crowd getting behind their 
team. Not many Queen's Park Rangers supporters here, by the way. We reckon only about 250 have made the trip from London. And there's a little flashpoint again between Jerry Gow this time and Ian Dawes. And the Queen's Park Rangers venture up Alan Harris. Barry Claxton there telling him to sit down. And it's going to be a booking for Jerry Gow. And there is now fighting. Now, this is what we mustn't see on football grounds. There was actually blows exchanged there between the benches, and that is bad for the game of football. And this is really heated. Well, I know during the first half, one or two members of the Queen's Park Rangers backroom staff on the bench were very upset by some of the incidents, but it really shouldn't come to fisticuffs off the pitch. Now, what's going to happen to Jerry Gow? Remember, Fenwick has gone off. Now Jerry Gow gets his name in the book. For that incident with Young Ian Dawes. And it's a booking for Jerry Gow. No more than that. Get past Neil. Appears for offside, not given. Oh, the real bundle there. And what a good save in the end by Mountford. And the ball is now out of play. Well, everything's happening in this match. I don't think the crowd quite know what to make of it. So, the corner, and straight into the side netting. What an anti-climax. <laughs> Everything seems to be happening in this match, and as Mike Flanagan goes for the ball with Brecken, Hazel and Green get tangled in all sorts of knots. Flanagan gets in the shot, and look, there is he, Mountford. Well, he's just deflected it away. Towner looking for the long and high ball forward for Moore. Hazel will win it, and what's more, will get an elbow from Ronnie Moore, and the ref picked him out. There is so much going on in this match, and now Ronnie Moore is going to be spoken to by Alan Banks. Certainly going to be another booking. Ronnie Moore looking as though he can't quite understand him. So this is what happens here as... Uh, Steve Wicks tries to get the clearance away. Jerry Gow just tucks the little ball forward. Now, Tony Towner lofts the ball straight in the air, and Ronnie Moore is going for it with Bob Hazel. He's backing into Hazel almost there, and as they go up, Moore catches him, and it's a booking. Michael White's uh, back header eventually found Clive Allen. Now, what a kneel. Hazel's come forward to try and add something to his attack. He's lost out there, but still forward. It could now, Allen to Hazel. What a good ball. Can Bob Hazel get the equaliser? Well, he'll be moaning his luck there. Look at Tony Towner, it is, picking himself up. Good work by the little winger, who covers so much ground. What really has to be admired here is Clive Allen's ball through, which is inch perfect for Bob Hazel, who's continued his run forward, and he really gets his feet tangled there, but look at Towner managing to put him off his stroke as Mountford comes out and completes the save. And there is absolute mayhem going on now. The goalkeeper, Peter Hooker, is down, and the Queen's Park Rangers supporters have surrounded Ronnie Moore, and really this game is a boiling point. Alan Banks is having a terrible job trying to control this game, and Hooker all of a sudden rolled over there, clutching his chest. Ronnie Moore's in trouble, he's only just been booked, and he's been told to stand alone while the referee goes and speaks to him. The referee must consult his linesman, he's going to ask Mr Flood exactly what happened. Ronnie Moore's name went in the book two minutes ago, and he's off. Ronnie Moore takes the same journey that Terry Fenwick took in the first half. And that is the end of Ronnie Moore's afternoon's work. Well, what a sad way to end the afternoon. Ronnie Moore is the hero of Millmore. He's got 18 goals this season. But after that consultation between referee Alan Banks and his linesman, Alan Flood, it's the long and early walk to the dressing room. Now, Ronnie Moore is going to be met there by Barry Claxton. 
and Rotherham officials on the pitch. John Adams, the executive director here at Rotherham there as well. Alan Harris is standing on the touchline. Goalkeeper Peter Hucker is still on the floor. And really, I'm afraid we've seen the ugly side of football here. Now, I'm not quite sure what Emlyn Hughes is saying there. He appears satisfied with the explanation being given to him by Simon Stainrod. But this match really has had so much. Queen's Park Rangers, meanwhile, are going to make a substitution. That's Steve Burke. He's uh, going to have to come into the action, I think, because the goalkeeper looks so groggy, it's doubtful whether he can continue. And what's more, St John Ambulance people have been called on with a stretcher, and it looks as though Peter Hooker is going to end his afternoon on a stretcher. He really does look very unwell there. So... Queen's Park Rangers already down to 10 men, now lose their goalkeeper. Rotherham are also down to 10 men, with Ronnie Moore having been sent off. And this game continues to provide so much incident, they'll be talking about it for the rest of the season. Well, there are almost as many people on the pitch as there are off it at the moment. The trainers from both sides are on. They're wondering what it's all about and what's happening. And there goes Peter Hooker. Well, last week he was in England's under-21 squad in Poland after only a dozen games in the Football League, and he's being applauded off here at Millmore just ten days later, although I don't suppose he'll know much about it. There's Glenn Rhoda, one of Peace Park Rangers players, inquiring about the injury. Tony Curry's out on the pitch, there's Tony Curry, the former Leeds United hero. Talking to Steve Wicks, there's Terry Venables, the Queen's Park Rangers manager, he's inquiring what's happened. Alan Harris is asking Steve Wicks, and I wonder if Wicks has been sent off foremost, because there is so much discussion going on here. Well, this game has produced some incredible moments. Now, Wicks is staying on, he's all right, but... We've lost two players this afternoon by being sent off, that's Terry Fenwick and Ronnie Moore. And Queen's Park Rangers have now lost a goalkeeper and have to decide who's going into goal. Well, what a day he's had. Alan Banks, he won't forget this one in a hurry. He's been struck by the ball and laid out. And Steve Burke, a substitute, who used to play for Brian Clough at Nottingham Forest, comes into the match in goal. What a way to start a game as substitute. Meanwhile, I would think we've lost four or five minutes of actual playing time there. Four and a half minutes on our clocks. Booing all around Millmore. And we really have seen the side of football at times this afternoon that we do not want to see. Such a shame when we were talking at the start of the game about the school children here, and how Rotherham were promoting a good side of football. And now, sadly, we've seen the sour side. <laughs> now, a testing moment for Burke, who wasn't quite sure whether to come for it or not. In case you've forgotten the score, by the way, it's Rotherham 1, Queen's Park Rangers 0. Park Rangers and the flag up against Stainrod. And a free kick by Green, away again by Wicks, who's done a mountainous job in defence. Oh, well won by Stancliffe and one fairly too. Oh, 
again. Here we go again. Clive Allen's being pulled across, and Evelyn Howes, I think, is sensibly trying to cool it down. He's saying it wasn't as bad as all that. So Clive Allen goes over to give his name. This is what happened. Uh, Stan Clifford just won the ball, knocks it down to Gow. Uh, Flanagan's the man behind him, and it's Clive Allen's lunging tackle from behind. Up goes the flag. And into the book goes the name of Clive Allen. Waddock will try one, and a cracking effort from Gary Waddock, and Mountford got the touch. But Waddock hasn't scored since May last year, but he wasn't far off there. It's the quick throw that catches Rotherham out, and as the ball is laid back by Micklewhite, here's Waddock, first time, top corner, and Mountford had to touch it over. Emlyn Hughes had stayed up. Well, can Emlyn Hughes go all the way down the middle on his own? What a finish this would be. Oh, and he's brought down by Micklewhite. Well, Micklewhite's been booked already, and he's going to get another talking to. The referee's reaching for his book. Now, he can't possibly book Micklewhite again. He's got to send him off, if anything, because he's already been booked. Now, will the referee change his mind? Well, Gary Micklewhite's off. It's the end of his afternoon. This game just goes on from bizarre incident a bizarre incident. It's, a, it's not often you see Emlyn Hughes powering his way down the middle of a pitch. I won't say unopposed because it's Micklewhite who's going to bounce him off the ball and there the final lunging tackle and the end product is that. Gow, a towner. Is there a last throw of the dice from the Rotherham winger? It's three men inside him. Here's one of them, Gow. McEwen's forward. They still can't find a way through. Towner, almost at walking pace now. If he can get the cross in, he can't, it's a corner kick. And the referee has left the pitch, he blew his whistle and literally raced for the dressing rooms. What a way to finish a game. I think referee Alan Vance decided he'd had enough and he was close to the dressing rooms and that was the best exit point. Only one goal, but they'll talk about this game for a long, long time. John Seisman got the only goal in the second minute. We've had three players sent off, we've had six players booked, and the Queen's Park Rangers goalkeeper ended the afternoon in hospital and 13 and a half minutes of injury time played. Well, what more can you say about a game like that? Final score at Millmore. Rotherham United 1, Queen's Park Rangers nil, and three very vital points for Rotherham as they go heading for the first division. Terry, I saw more incident this afternoon than I've seen all season. Uh, did you really get your lads pepped up that much? <laughs> oh, you should have paid twice the money then to come in. No, I, I thought that uh, we know it's going to be a tough game here. We know they've got people that's going to get stuck in. That's part of the game. And, and we. I thought we played some excellent football. As well as the, it was a tough game, I thought we were the better side. Our goalkeeper, apart from getting a kick in the throat, he didn't get much else to do. But, and I thought uh, we caused all the problems. Can you really pinpoint why a game like that that's built up really to a very important game that can spill over into a lot of nasty incidents, Terry? Well, first of all, um, the, the goal the lads felt was offside, which mm. is one of those things we didn't get the decision. That doesn't bother you. Then they felt that it was a very, very bad decision to, for Terry Fennick to get sent off um, and then another one got booked, and another one got booked, and then another one got sent off, and another one got sent In the end, you just didn't know what was happening. I mean, I just think the um, referees seemed to lose the game and antagonise the spectators, the players. And in the end, um, it seemed to touch, the whole atmosphere seemed to touch every part of the ground. You wouldn't pinpoint it down to so many youngsters really trying to prove something to you for this big game coming up next Saturday? Well, what, what are you saying? You're saying it was our side? No, no, I'm saying really that a lot of your experienced players out of the side through circumstances beyond your control, yeah. and they really look, were very eager, a lot of your kids today. Yeah, but I don't think it was the youngsters that, that had, had any problems. I mean, Terry Fennick got sent off, and he's not a youngster, he's an experienced player. The, boy, the other boy that got sent off was just for two minor incidents, but were two bookable offences, so OK, he's got a go, I accept that. But I don't think that... Uh, I, would ex I would not accept that at all, no. It could be a very frustrating week for you. Your season really could finish. Today was a bad result for you. Mm. If you lose this one on Monday night, and then this very big one for you next week, it's mm. amazing that 46 weeks can go up in a week. Well, I wouldn't look at it that way. We've got to be thinking about winning on Monday and winning on Saturday. Terry, that's very positive thinking. Thank you. Well, with me is a very battered and bruised Emlyn Hughes. Emlyn, we can look at the incident because no one hardly saw it, which is what happened from Ray Manford here. 
You didn't attempt to jump. Well, you're just coming up there. He caught you there with his right elbow. Yeah, ever? his elbow caught me in the the face and the nose, and it's actually I thought I'd broke my nose to tell the honest truth. And Did it's you? very very sore, and he's he caught me in the lip there. But it's one of the things. I mean, to be truthful, I didn't even know the lad had gone off because I was. I was down for a good two or three minutes, and I didn't know where I was when I got up. The game was played with an incredible spirit on both sides. But Derek, you're going to get this now. We've got nine games to go, and if we put a run together of about six wins in them nine games, we've got a chance of going in the first division. QPR were exactly the same position today. If they can put nine, uh, six or seven wins in there, 10 or 11 games because they've got games in hand on us. They've got a chance of going into the first division. You don't expect games now that to come on and people play with handbags and to mm -hmm. prance around and do tricks and that. It's going to be a side that goes out and battles and wins matches. But I get the feeling after the match that it seems there seems to be a lot of ill feeling and bad feeling, Emlyn, from the outcome of this game today. Well, I, no, I mean, you look at the game and you think there's been bookings and sendings off, but. When, when, when you analyse the game, there's, there's been very little dirty play in the match. I mean, OK, there's been niggles and pulls and tugs, but, I mean, there's been nothing vicious in the match. Nothing that has gone in and said, oh, he's gone to try and break somebody's leg or he's gone to really try and cop somebody in the match. Well, there was a lot of inconsistency from the referee and his officials today. I felt, quite frankly, that they could have been a lot better. Well, I mean, uh, you were watching the game from the side. It's very, very difficult to judge when you're playing in a match. Emlyn, what about the run-in from the, the rest of the season? You've got it in your own hands now to do it. Well, the thing is, Derek, we've got home matches against sides that are up there with us. And if we can, if we can take points in them, then you can never tell. But no matter what happens to Rotherham United this season, we've had a hell of a season, Derek. I mean, a tremendous season. People were talking about us relegation and we'll go down and you need this and you need that and he can't do this and he can't do that. We're up there fighting for a first division place. It's a tremendous season for, for Rotherham United, for Rotherham United Football Club and for the fans that come and watch us. I think that they've had a hell of a season, the fans, because they've enjoyed every match that's been played here. You could be playing on the first division next year. <laughs> I don't know if I will be, Derek. I'm getting a bit older. If Thunder might sign you on again, if we're... I'm in there. Alan, thank you. That's OK, Derek, any time. <laughs> nice to end on a laugh. In all honesty, we could probably have shown all 104 minutes of that match and still not seen enough. The news today, by the way, is that Rangers goalkeeper Peter Hooker is not as badly injured as was feared. He's been released from hospital and is likely to play in the Cup semi-final next weekend. The net result was that Rotherham's three points kept them tucked in behind the three promotion places. Watford went top by beating... Out the minimum of of success and failure begin to emerge, you'll see an excellent second division promotion tussle.